The Hittites and the Old Testament by Frederick Fivey Bruce Chapter 3 3. The Hittite Empire In the 3rd millennium BC there lived in Central Asia Minor, in the valley of the river Halys, modern Kazil Ermak, a people called the Kadi, who spoke a language which was neither Indo-European nor Semitic. They came early into contact with the inhabitants of the Euphrates-Tigris Valley. Sargon and Naramsin of Akkad, 24th century BC, are said to have led invading armies well into Asia Minor, and some centuries later Assyrian trading colonies were established in Cappadocia, to the east of the territory of the Kadi. Records of these traders have been uncovered in the Cappadocian tablets, written in Old Assyrian, which were found at Kultip in Asiatic Turkey, the ancient Canes. Point 9 This Assyrian settlement lasted for about three generations, circa 1850 to 1750 BC, during a time when the Assyrians were temporarily in control of Upper Mesopotamia. Shortly afterwards the Assyrian lines of communication with Cappadocia were broken, by the incursion of folk from the north into Upper Mesopotamia. About 2000 BC we have ample evidence of a great ethnic movement which sent various peoples from the highland zone north of the Fertile Crescent into the lands within and around the Crescent. Soon after that date the Indo-European Hittites appear in Asia Minor, the Hurrians, the Biblical Horites, in Upper Mesopotamia, the Kassites, the Biblical Kush of Gen X 8, in Babylonia. How far back the pressure started and what ultimately caused it are matters for speculation, it may have been the result of famine in the steppelands of South Russia, but it is important in that it brought the Indo-European speakers for the first time onto the stage of history. Not only do we meet the Indo-Europeans who invaded the territory of the Anatolian Kadi and took over their name, we have the related Luwians farther west, and among the Hurrians and Kassites we have clear evidence of a ruling caste bearing names which are not simply Indo-European but Aryan in the proper sense. i.e. Indo-Iranian, although the main mass of the Hurrians and Kassites were linguistically neither Indo-European nor Semitic. Point 10 The importance of this movement for the history of civilization is very great, it was these northern peoples, to mention but one contribution, who introduced the horse and horse-drawn chariot to the Middle East. Point 11. The Indo-European Hittites seem to have entered Asia Minor from the Caucasus region. The monuments depict them as retaining their snowshoes even after they came to lower-lying country. Their western neighbors, the Luwians, speaking a kindred tongue, probably came across the Bosporus and Dardanelles at a somewhat earlier date and mingled with the aboriginal Kadi. The people with whom we are concerned settled among the Kadi and established themselves in city-states. They soon assumed the name Kadi themselves, at least as a territorial designation, but they called their own Indo-European language Nasalai or Nizamalai, Nizian, after Nessus, one of their chief city-states. The language of the original Kadi they continued to call Katili. Nowadays we conventionally call the language of the Indo-European invaders Hittite, and the language of the older population Proto-Hittite.12. The earliest kings of some of these Hittite city-states lived before the disappearance of the Assyrian colonies in Cappadocia. They fought against each other, and the ruling house of Kusar proved strongest. Pitkanas of Kusar captured the city of Nessus, probably one of the four Anatolian cities known to classical writers as Nyssa or Nyssa, and his son Anitas enlarged it and made it his capital. Anitas was the first Hittite ruler to assume the title Great King. This dynasty became more powerful still. About 1650 BC, King Labarnas, having united the Hittites under his sway, and extended his realm to the Black and Mediterranean seas, carried the Hittite arms beyond the frontiers of Asia Minor into Syria. He enjoys the distinction of having his name used by succeeding kings as a title in the sense of king or emperor 13 while the name of his wife Tuananas came to be used as a title meaning queen or queen mother. Catusilisai, the son of Labarnas, continued his father's military enterprise in Syria, and increased his domains at the expense of the kingdom of Aleppo, Kalpa. Mersilisai XIV his successor, shifted the imperial capital to Catusa's Silver City, which occupied a strong strategic position east of the Halys. Continuing his predecessor's campaigns, he captured the city of Aleppo itself, and in a lightning raid down the Euphrates he sacked Babylon and carried away the image of Marduk among the other spoil. This raid so weakened Babylon that it immediately afterwards fell an easy prey to the Kassites, who already dominated the eastern provinces of Babylonia, and established a dynasty which lasted until circa 1150 B.C.15. But Merciless had to deal with domestic strife and was unable to consolidate his position in Syria and Mesopotamia. While he and his successors dealt with trouble at home, 
The Hurrians made themselves the dominant power in those parts, and founded the kingdoms of Canigalbat and Mitanni in Upper Mesopotamia, circa 1500 BC. Some degree of stability was restored to the Hittite kingdom by King Telepinus, whose name is associated with the codification of the Hittite constitution and system of law. 16 The Hittite king was not an absolute monarch, his authority was limited by a council called the Pancus, like the Greek bull, consisting of the feudal nobles. He had the right to nominate his successor, but his nomination must be ratified by the Pancus. The king was head of the state in matters civil, military, and religious alike. The succession passed normally to his son or son-in-law. The queen, Toananas, retained her authority for life, not until the death of the queen mother did the king's wife acquire the title. Her role was chiefly a religious one. In some of these provisions we see traces of a matriarchal system, originating probably not with the Indo-European ruling caste but with some of the native Anatolian elements in the Hittite population. In religious matters the Indo-European Hittites largely took over the worship of the earlier Qadi, the manner of the gods of the land, and from the Qadi, too, the matriarchal elements were likely derived. Point 17. The laws of the Hittites were, generally speaking, humane as compared with those of Babylonia and Assyria, no degrading mutilations were imposed as penalties. Regard for the sanctity of treaties and respect for women are marked features of their system. The reign of Tutkalius II, circa 1450 BC, marks the beginning of a new period of Hittite imperial expansion. He resumed the old warfare against Aleppo, which had accepted the suzerainty of the kingdom of Mitanni. But the southward advance of the Hittites was blocked not only by the new Hurrian kingdoms but even more by the Egyptian kings of Dynasty 18, who, after driving the Hyksos into Asia, extended their empire into Syria. Tudkalius judged it wise to send an embassy with gifts to Thothmus III who, after his decisive victory at Megiddo in 1468 BC, had reached Karchemish on the Euphrates in 1462 and taken Kadesh on the Orontes in 1455. The next two kings continued Tudkalius's activity in North Syria, but it was his great-grandson Sepulalulius, 1395-1350, who first succeeded in penetrating the barrier which hemmed the Hittites in on the south. It is at this time that the Iron Age begins in the Middle East, when a process for the economical smelting of iron was devised in Kizwatna, a province of the Hittite Empire. Sepulalulius overthrew the Mitanni state and added most of it to his empire, but left the portion beyond the Euphrates as a vassal kingdom to serve as a buffer state against the rising power of Assyria. Westwards he carried his arms as far as Lebanon. In the year when the kingdom of Mitanni fell, 1370 BC, he could boast, from Lebanon to the Euphrates in less than one year I have added these lands to my dominion. Between the Hittites and Egyptians the petty kings of Syria found themselves in an embarrassing position. Some who had formerly been vassals of Pharaoh now transferred their loyalty to the Hittite king, especially when the Egyptian grip weakened in the reign of Akhenaten. In spite of the friendly terms of the letter in which Sepulalulius congratulated Akhenaten on his accession, relations cannot have been too cordial. The Mitanni dynasty which the Hittite had reduced to vassalage was closely linked to the Egyptian royal house, and the Hittite was too near the Egyptian territory and too powerful to be comfortable. Yet the Hittite and Egyptian crowns might have been united, it is interesting to speculate on what might have been the course of events if this had happened. The widow of an Egyptian king, whether of Akhenaten himself or of his successor Tutankhamun is not certain, wrote to Sepulalulius expressing a desire to marry one of his sons. A Hittite prince was accordingly sent to Egypt, but met a violent end, we may guess that the new king of Egypt had no wish to welcome a Hittite rival so near the throne. Sepulalulius declared war on Egypt, and his son Arnawandas led an army into Egyptian territory in Syria. But the other frontiers of the Hittite empire were in a state of great unrest, and when Sepulalulius died in the course of his last campaign, his sons Arnawandas I and Merciless II were hard put to it to consolidate their father's conquests. There were hostile tribes in Asia Minor and North Syria, and in the east there was the growing might of Assyria. The Assyrians had once been subject to Mitanni, but with the reduction of that kingdom by Sepulalulius, the Assyrians threw off their yoke and soon established themselves as overlords of the remnant of Mitanni which Sepulalulius had left, they took it over altogether. Circa 1250 BC 
Muatalis, the son and successor of Merciless II, made a treaty with the king of the Achaeawa, identified by many with the Achaeans, whose territory lay in the southwest of Asia minor point 18 but he is best known as the wretched king of Kadi against whom Ramesses II fought at the Battle of Kadesh, 1297 BC. Kadesh on the Orontes, frontier city of the Hittite Empire, had been captured by Seti I, but was quickly retaken by the Hittites. Ramesses II, in the fifth year of his reign, led his army to the attack against the Hittites, but while he claims an overwhelming victory, the sequel makes it plain that the issue was a draw. The battle was followed after sixteen years by a treaty between Ramesses and Catusilus III, the brother of Moetalus, on an UTI Posidetus. Basis in addition to the Egyptian version of the treaty already mentioned, an Akkadian text has been found at Bogazkoi. It has been called the first non-aggression pact in history. The agreement was further cemented in 1269 BC when the daughter of Catusilus came to Egypt as one of the wives of Ramesses. From this time onwards the Egyptian and Hittite empires alike grew weaker. The Assyrian menace led Catusilus to seek an alliance with Babylonia as well as with Egypt but a greater menace loomed much nearer on the west. The Achaeawa pressed harder, and there was greater pressure behind them. The downfall of the Minoan Empire about 1400 BC and a fresh wave of folk migrations from the lands north of the Balkan Peninsula led to the filling of the Mediterranean with the peoples of the sea, wanderers uprooted from their homes, driven to make a living by piracy and coastal raids, and seeking new lands to settle in. The Egyptian records tell of their attempts on Egypt in the reigns of Marenta and Ramesses III, which were beaten off. But the Hittite land fared otherwise, the bogus Khoi records come to a sudden end about 1200 BC, when Catusas was burned. To this wave of migrations belong the arrival of the Phrygians from Europe in Asia Minor, the wandering of the Etruscans from Asia Minor to Italy, the Philistine settlement in Canaan. The fall of Troy, celebrated in classical epic, was an incident in this great crisis. 19 Homer may even bring the Hittites into his story, if they are the mysterious Kataya whom he mentions in Odyssey 11. 521, as was suggested in 1876 by W. E. Gladstone in his Homeric Synchronisms, pages 171 to 183. 9 It was not, however, from these Assyrian merchants that the Hittites appear to have taken over the cuneiform script, but through the Hurrians as intermediaries. C.E. E. E. Spicer, Introduction to Hurrian, 1941, pages 13f. 10. In a treaty between the Hittite king Suppalalulias and the Mitanni king Matiwaza, among the gods of Mitanni invoked are Mitrashil, Arunashil, Indera, and Nashatayana, these are obviously the same as the Indian deities Mitra, Varina, Indra, and the Nasatya twins. Among the Mitanni kings we have such typically Aryan names as Artatama, Ardashuara, among the Kassite kings, Bernaburiash, Nazi Bugash, Nazi Marutash. 11 Among the Bogus Khoi records is a treatise on the care of horses and chariot racing, written by a man named Kikali, who belonged originally to Mitanni. Although composed in Hittite, it contains the following Aryan technical terms, Ikawartana, Terawartana, Panzawartana, Shadowartana, and Nawartana, by haplology for Nawawartana, meaning one turning, three turnings, five turnings, seven turnings, and nine turnings respectively. The numerals correspond to Sanskrit eka, tri, panka, sapta, and naba, but that 4-7 has already reached the Prakrit stage with the assimilation of p to t, the second element in the compounds corresponds to Sanskrit bartana, turning. In Syria at this time we find an equestrian warrior caste called Mariano, with which we may compare Sanskrit Maria, young man. Hebrew sus, horse, is very likely an Aryan loanword, cf Sanskrit akvas. It should be noted that Sais theory that Hebrew pav rash. Horse, is a word of Hittite origin is quite erroneous, co, r gurney, in. P.E.F.Q. 1937, pages 194f. E. S. Spicer suggests that one of the Egyptian words for chariot may be of Hurrian origin, ethnic movements in the Near East, 1933, Pages 49f. 12 Proto Hittite has been connected with the Northwest Caucasian language group, R. Bleichsteiner in Ebert's Real Lexicon der Vorgestik 6, 1926, pages 260 to 63. Such connections are in the nature of the case precarious. Among ancient tongues, Proto Hittite shows contacts with Hurrian, Elamite, and Kassite, i.e., it belongs to the language group to which the late Enumar and his school give the name Japhetic. 
It was a prefixing language, example binu, child, has a plural lebanu, children. 13. The title appears as tabarnas. Actually the word is proto-Hittite, having as its initial sound an unvoiced L which is represented now as L, now as T, and sometimes as TL. The same sound appears in Elamite. Compare the Aztec unvoiced L which the Spaniards represented in writing as TL, as in Quetzalcoatl, Papa Catapital. The unvoiced Welsh LL, which some English speakers try to represent by LTH or THL, is a similar sound. 14. The name Merciless survived for long in Asia Minor. According to Herodotus, IE 7, Merciless was the name by which the Lydian king Candals was known to the Greeks, he implies that it was a patronymic, Candals being the son of Mersos. C.F. Merciless, tyrant of Mytilene in the 7th century BC, whose death is celebrated by Alcaeus, Fragment 39. Nu Upsilon Nu Cairo Mu Epsilon Theta Sigma Theta Eta Nu Cap Iota Tau Iota Nu Alpha Pi Rho Beta Alpha Nu Pi Nu Eta Nu Pi Epsilon Iota Delta Kappa Tau Theta Alpha Nu Epsilon Moro Sigma Iota Lambda Omicron 15 The end of the first, Amorite, dynasty of Babylon, which was precipitated by this raid, is given by Sidney Smith as 1595 BC, by W. F. Albright as 1550. 16. The idea that Telepinus extended his influence as far south as Damascus has been based on a doubtful identification of the Damascunas of the Hittite records. 17. The matriarchate in Asia Minor is of course closely connected with the worship of the great mother of the gods in that area. 18. C.F. Samar, Daya Hejavara 1932. 19. The date of the Trojan War was, according to Eratosthenes, 1193 to 1184 BC, according to the Parian Marble, 1218-1209 BC. This traditional dating accords remarkably closely with archaeological evidence.